Well, I guess if you're listening to this right now, you probably have some time on your hands, kind of like we all do. So if you haven't heard about Anchor, it is by far the easiest way for you to make a podcast. Now, podcasting is, it's a revolution, and we have entered a new world. And Anchor helps make it free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your own podcast right from your phone or from your computer. And, you know, we're certainly on the phone a lot. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and a whole bunch more. And you can even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. So really, the cool thing is it's everything you need to get some ideas off of your mind and share your knowledge with the rest of the planet while the planet is in a state of resting. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm right now to get started. Thanks for listening. Welcome to the Optimized Mind Podcast, the podcast where we help you optimize every aspect of your mind, physically, emotionally, spiritually, sexually, and everything else in between. My name is Lawrence Lanoff, and I will be your host. I'll be guiding you in our exploration of how to optimize your mind and your life and how to use technology and reality to make sense of that which seems confusing and senseless. And that will be my point to teach you waypoints, understandings, ideas and concepts to really help you unscrew your mind because most of us are, uh, well, our minds are pretty messed up with stuff we've learned and things we believe in. And as a very close friend of mine says, it's not what you believe that's the problem. It's, it's what you believe that's incorrect. So join us as every two weeks we look deeply into how to optimize your mind and really embody and embrace the beauty and the excitement and the power of an optimized life. As long as you know that you are not identical with the way in which you appear, then the people will can't help noticing that at home, for instance, you are quite different from what you appear to be in public. I am a deeply religious non-believer. This is a somewhat new kind of religion. Science has in fact discovered God, and you can talk to the hardline atheists and they will say, looks like science has indeed discovered God. There is no other God but a personal God. Einstein does not know what he's talking about. He's all wrong. Professor Hawking, in the very last paragraph of your book, you say that if we discover a complete theory of, of the universe, then um, it should be in time be understandable in broad principle to everyone and not just to a few scientists. The question of whether God is bound by the laws of science is a bit like a question. Can God make a stone that is so heavy that he cannot lift it? Look at the history of religion and be fascinated by it. Just look at the history of art and so on. Uh, but I, I don't think that religion has anything useful to teach us. One of the main reasons why people are religious is because they're persuaded by the apparent design of living things. And that's completely destroyed by it. My guest this week is hypnotist Mark Cunningham. I happened to be able to do a live interview with him after having a good two-hour discussion about 
hypnosis and reality and the way the brain works. And I will have to say, speaking to a hypnotist about optimizing one's mind and the symbolic nature of the brain is a pretty cool thing because anybody who's had a lot of practical experience dabbling around in that uh, has a lot to share. And I've been wanting to talk to and interview Mark Cunningham for quite a while. So this is the unedited version, unbleeped, Mark and I talking about hypnosis, optimization, and the symbolic brain. Enjoy. Take a listen. The interview begins now. Awesome. Well, okay, I'm going to, we'll just begin. I'm going to assume that if you're listening, you've already heard the intro to this program, and you know a little bit about my guest. And I will say, I do want to say, is there anything, Mark, mm -hmm. that you would love people to know about you that that is uh, talks about where you come from and who <clears throat> you are and how did you get to us wow. sitting in this <clears throat> booth? I, I know. It's like uh, 62 years of uh, wild ass adventures and, and hey, I'm in San Diego. Uh, no, actually, I, I'm here with you today, Lawrence, because you're one of the few guys who I can talk to about how things actually work with the mind yes. and how that reflects through the body and it really changes the way you experience uh, your world. And I talk to you and you get it. And then you just like say something back and it's like, holy shit, he understands. So <laughs> I am immensely pleased to be here today. Awesome. I, I feel the same way. And I've been I've actually been wanting to. Um, to connect with you because I, I I had a feeling that we could actually have this conversation and because mm -hmm. it's a rare thing. So then I was excited to say, well, why don't we have a conversation and share some of that mm -hmm. with the audience? Because, <clears throat> you know, there are so many mythologies out there. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And we are symbolic creatures. Mm hmm and because we're symbolic creatures, we we have one phenomenon that I think is really kind of the big the big issue. Okay. <laughs> Which is we're symbolic creatures. We make shit up. Yeah. Right? And then it's like we turn around and spin, you know, like pin the tail on the donkey, you spin the person around and then you're like, go. And then you don't realize that the thing that's scaring you is the thing that you just made up 30 seconds ago. Yeah, absolutely. It had absolutely no life before. The only life it has is the energy you put into it. There's nobody else in the entire universe who's upset about it or thinking about it at the same time. It's all you. Well, yes. And that's like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> <laughs> like that's that's it. I mean, that's like I don't like we could finish right now. Okay, we're done. Podcast that's the nature of reality. That's uh, there you up. go. <laughs> <laughs> Big finish. Hey, yeah, <clears throat> yeah it's um, one of the things that uh, I've always found uh, so fascinating about this particular thing about uh, building your own simple sets or building your own reality is, in my experience, um, and I'm about 35 years into this, is that. People just don't grasp the most basic concept, which is human beings are always in trance. The unconscious mind functions in trance, and it's not logical, it's not linear, it's not verbal. It works only exactly. in symbols. Only yes. in symbols. Oh, my God, yes, that mm -hmm. is it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and once you grasp that, well, it's, it's a terrifying, uh, exciting, humbling moment because, I mean, the good news is that Anything that ever happened good in your life, you dreamt it up. Congratulations. Yeah. Okay? And every time you fell down, you screwed up, uh, you felt shamed, well, you did that too. <laughs> okay? And so everything has been you. And it all be happens because inside your uh, other than conscious processes, you're working in this trance state. Now, what I mean when I talk about trance is... Um, it's, it's a widely misunderstood term. Most people think of it as unnatural fascination. Like, you know, it's like saying the, um, right. like the animal staring right. at the snake, something right. like that, right? Uh, what it actually is, is that state where whatever you think or are led to think 
becomes your literal reality. And because it happens in trance in your other than conscious process, it becomes the bedrock, the filter that you use to approach or work with everything else that you directly experience. So you can end up being fully in tune with something that's happening, or more likely what's going to happen is that you'll be screening out vitally important <laughs> elements of your, of your actual real life because inside your pathological trance, you're holding yourself down, you're limiting yourself as though those limitations were real. It, it's, it, it, a metaphor I like to use is, you know, isometric exercises, right? It's like using your body to work against itself. That's exactly how your subconscious works, is you generate some trauma because you believe in it, and then you generate some kind of repressive mechanism to protect yourself from the trauma. So you got energy pushing up, energy pushing down, which means at the end of the day, you don't have enough energy to just relax, be orgasmic, have a great time. Right. So, wow. <clears throat> the big piece that I see there that is, um, boy, I don't know, like, how am I going to say this? It's, you're generating your own energy and then you're generating your resistance to that energy. And then mm -hmm. that creates that kind of um, dynamic where this is where most people live that I see, you know, just in this constant right. stressed out thing, literally fighting something they made up. The, 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 the question I have is like there's what I notice is that there's this substrata of belief system. Okay. And symbolically, those symbols seem to be running like processes in the background. Sure. These kind of um, deep, I, I call them limbic symbols. Mm -hmm. um, symbols that are not only happening in the background, but in a kind of a traumatic space beyond your conscious awareness, and they're just looping. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, so what, one thing that I heard in what you said is that really is the basis of advertising in a sense, right? Because if I can stimulate an unconscious process in you, like an unconscious framework, mm -hmm. and suddenly you're feeling, oh, I don't know, a little bit just like, oh, I just don't feel quite so good. You have no conscious idea why. Right. Mm-hmm. But what we do is we make up some stories about that. But really what I did is this kind of very deep limbic framing in my background mm -hmm. brought forth a, an emotional attitude and then kind of, depending on how competent I am at this, give you some suggestions once you're in that frame. Right. Which then the frame itself, in essence, limits your ability to perceive clearly, which we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. Right. And so, so the very thing that you're feeling is a monster you created or somebody else kind of led you to right? in this deep trance state. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to program you accordingly. Right. All right. Yeah, for professional trance workers, um, we all know that the first thing that is necessary for any type of change is to enter into your trance, okay? And mm -hmm. to, to find the open, unguarded door, to enter into that trance state. And those who, of us who have a lot of experience or a natural talent for it can begin to perceive directly, without the word, um, exactly what's going on inside. You see their pictures, you feel their emotions. Yes, yeah. <clears throat> and you realize what it means to them. And that the cool thing is... Once you start to figure out, um, using your time terminology, the symbols with which they are, they're using to process or construct their life, um, you can begin to manipulate those symbols. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. and no one has a defense sense system against symbols. Exactly. Right. So yeah. if you change that symbol somewhat or you change the association they have with that symbol, all of a sudden you can affect tremendous change and it happens just like that. It's just like that. Yeah. yeah, because there is no defense. And yeah. because it happens within that trance state, the unconscious mind will no longer fight against it because it has already experienced it as real as the fact that you took a shower this morning. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's no longer saying, well, wouldn't it be nice if, or, oh my God, I hope this happens, or crap, I'm afraid this is going to happen. You had a literal, visceral experience that happened only inside your mind, and yet because that's where you build your actual reality, it becomes part of your physical reality as well. Right. 
Yeah, that that's one thing that um, that I work when I'm coaching students. I will take them for what I call this kind of matrixy walk, where <laughs> we're you know we're walking through, let's say Third Street Promenade in Santa Monica, and you're walking where you can see thousands of people passing you by, which means you can see thousands of mythologies expressed in the body. Right. Uh huh. And. It becomes, once you see it, it becomes so clear. It just, it's, it's, it freaks people out on one hand. It's like, right. it's horrible. It's beautiful because you're now cutting through all of the, um, you know, what, what seemed to be very abstract and I don't understand it. Or, but then you, you start to cut through that and you see like, oh, wait a minute. There are kind of only a handful of mythologies that express in the body. Mm -hmm. In other words, they can all be reduced down. That was my big, my big idea, which I haven't really had a chance to share with you, but the, but it was really realizing that these can all reduce down to four or five things. Mm -hmm. And all of those things express the same way in the body. Mm -hmm. And I can watch, I can, I can know a person's religious background so many times. I can, and they're just like, how did you know? Mm -hmm. Well, because your body is screaming <laughs> exactly. your belief system. <laughs> it's as though they have a flashing neon. It's totally. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a strange thing. And I love leading people so that they can see that. Because, right. again, you can't be duped if you're seeing the magic trick. So here's the thing. This is another metaphor for it. Okay. A doctor can go to see magicians perform mm -hmm. and the doctor will be like, oh my God, that was the most amazing. Do you think he really cut that girl in half? I mean, you know, and they're just like, wow, how did they do? do he caught the bullet in his teeth while it smashed through the glass in here. They're just like, wow. You took a very smart human who may do brain surgery right. or whatever else mm -hmm. And you fake the shit out of them. You right. just fake them. And they're just like, maybe that really happened. Mm -hmm. Norris, did that really happen? Do you think it did? Do you think you've really caught that bullet? Right. Like that can happen. You cannot fake out another magician. Right. 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 Because, well, the, another magician is within the same frame of experience. Exactly. Yeah. That's what happens when I, when I teach people the magic trick. Mm -hmm. Right. You're, you're like, OK, so, you know, there's what I forgot what it is. But Penn and Teller, they and Wired magazine, they did a thing. You could look it up online. But it was like I think there were just seven basic magic tricks and everything is a variation on that. Uh -huh. Well, similarly, there are four basic spiritual mythologies and literally every single religion, spiritual practice everything that exists thus far I discovered this 14 years ago is just a variation on that right and so I listen to people and they're like no 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 but you don't understand this thing is this chocolate bar is not chocolate it's extra chocolate I'm like it's a chocolate bar I, I once taught a master's class hmm? and what we did was we broke down every known hypnotic technique every known hypnotic phenomena and showed it down to the irreducible minimum. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And as soon as I walked out of that class, I realized, A, well, that was a marketing disaster. <laughs> <laughs> right, because it's over. It's over. It's over. There's it. nothing yeah. else to teach. God damn but, it. Yeah, but the other, the other Your thing, marketer person is like, fuck you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell did yeah, you Yeah, words to that effect, <laughs> yeah, yes. Okay. Um, but then, very rapidly, we figured out that it doesn't matter if you show them exactly how it works, if they're not prepared to enter into that frame, okay? It's like you can, you can show the irreducible minimum and prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt, and they'll go, that is so fucking cool, and they'll go out and just do something stupid right after the wow. learning because they have not yet embraced the frame. Part of their, um, their internal um, belief system, the really, really deep belief system, is that certain things are possible and certain things aren't. And so even mm. though you show them something like, oh, my fingertip just burst into flame. Let me show you exactly how that happens. You go, that's a cool trick. And then you show them a variation on the same fucking trick. I know, and they're and they go, that's magic. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, that, that, is, that is really one of the dilemmas of the symbolic brain, uh -huh. right? It, it Unless you are capable of detecting the pattern through, I guess, what you're calling kind of this 
understanding of the framework. Is yeah. that what you say? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, then each, you know, each time you see it, you're like, oh my god, I understand how this one works. But how did that finger bursting into flame yeah, yeah, work? Yeah. That was different. <clears throat> well, that's a that's a phenomenon that's kind of amazing to yeah. me. Yeah, and you fall back on things like, well, Lawrence can do the trick. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. And it's like, I, I tell people all the time, say, you don't understand. I grew up on a farm in the Midwest. I mean, it's not exactly Superman, you know? Yeah. Um, anybody can learn how to do this stuff. Anyone can learn how to see this way. Um, I even talk about how I screw myself up to try to dispel this whole, all oh, he's, he's the guru, he, he's beyond this. I go, no, let, let me explain exactly how your, your incredible trainer fucked up yesterday okay mm -hmm. it still doesn't matter if they believe that the power is outside themselves mm -hmm. um, the power to change the power to transform or the power to understand that they must be led into that if that's part of their bedrock philosophy then you can go on all day about the truth of the universe and it's just like they're watching tv mm -hmm. so what what is it that i mean this is kind of like a weird question but what is it that you like what gets you up in the morning on all this stuff? <clears throat> I love, I love the moment of awakening. I love the moment of awareness. I, I love seeing people right at that moment where they're like, "Holy shit, I get it." Yeah. Okay. And so long as I get enough of that in my day, then I can I can carry on in spite of all the rest. <laughs> you can slog through the rest. Yeah. <laughs> It's a yeah. That is, there is a lot of slogging in this. Yeah. Um, now you you're one of the things that I love about what you do is somehow you on a path of hypnosis came to the importance of sexuality. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. wh you know one of the things that I I teach is just a concept I teach is like it became clear to me in all of the things that I've done over the years. All roads are leading to sex. Right. One right. way or another. Hypnosis led you to sex. Right. It, is that accurate? Yeah. 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 It's actually it came out of um, therapy work, private therapy mm -hmm. work, um, sitting in a 10 by 10 room with perfectly normal, which is fucked up people, and talking about what's going on. And the, the first time someone sits down and says, this is my problem, okay, as a newly trained therapist, you're like, oh, my God, this is fucking fascinating. Mm -hmm. Then you hear it a hundred times, you hear it a thousand times, and now it's like, sit down, shut up, go in the trance, because I've heard it so many times, yeah. I know exactly what you need. But what I kept finding was that everyone had some level of sexual trauma, sexual yeah. repression, sexual neurosis. And so just fooling around... I'd go, well, hey, w w would you like me to take care of that? It's easy. 20 minutes max. Okay. And they're, well, well yeah, of course, I'd have them at trance at that point in time. So they say yes. And I'd found that if I did my work and freeing them from the emotional pain of their past and then leading them through, even though we're fully clothed, sitting in chairs at 45 degree angles, leading them through the best sexual experience of their life mm. because I'm right inside their subconscious. You're in their, their psyche, point. yeah. Right. Okay. Then I'd find out that <laughs> they would come out and their neuroses just weren't there. Mm. And, in fact, my breakthrough moment was I had one woman who came in and she had a, a pretty significant problem she wanted to work on, but obviously she had not been getting laid, certainly hadn't been getting laid correctly. And so I sent her home. To, I said, look, I said, I want you to go home and get laid. And she was shocked. She was appalled, thought it was tremendously unprofessional. And I said, I fucking don't care, honey. I said, you go home. I said, it doesn't have to be Mr. Right, but just Mr. Right now, uh, okay? Get somebody. And I said, I don't want someone who's going to make love to you. I want, like, screaming, rip the sheets, get thrown out of the Ramada, kind of fucking, okay? And then come back. And so... We scheduled an appointment, follow-up. She missed that one. Okay, she missed the next one. Finally, she came back a few weeks later, sat there, arms over her chest. I thought, super defensive. I go, what is the matter, honey? And she goes, you were right. Okay? And the thing was, she couldn't even remember her reporting problem. She could not remember having the, the horrible problem that brought her in to see me in the first place because the actual problem was she was so tangled up sexually that she couldn't process. She couldn't function. Mm -hmm. And that's when my practice just flipped over completely, and all the conventional therapy became kind of a sideshow, and what I was doing is working directly with their sexuality. And then I figured, well, why don't we just drop the sideshow and just handle the sex? Yeah. That, that's, that's, I, you know, 
came from a spiritual background and I basically came to the same thing. I was like, let's just drop the sideshow, mm-hmm. focus on the sex. And then there's a lot of nuance in that because, you know, you, you, you see those patterns where people are in their shame and like you said, tangled up with stuff. But mm-hmm. uh, a lot of, it, it's treacherous water because there's, A, there's a lot of charlatans. I mean, right. I use that word. <laughs> I use that in air quotes. What I mean by that is like people who who are. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, but it's but it's just people who are amateurs. Yeah, you know that's that's when I'm in the sexual field. That's pretty much what I I look at. I just go, man, this is amateur hour, and you think you're so amazing, and the fact that you think you're so amazing is actually blinding to the shortcomings of what you're offering, and and. And that amateur hour piece is what I find upsetting. Well, of course. And to, to look back at what you're talking about is once you understand the nature of the process, when it, when, once you see the mechanisms of the game, then you realize how crippled up these enlightened trainers actually are. Oh, my God. So what, what do you – can you give a sort of a, a, a digest of what those processes are from your mind that, that is like in an accessible way? Is there some something that you could share about that like – which processes? Uh, the, the I guess the hypnotic processes, like or the things that you said, like oh, once you see these processes oh, that the train, okay. you know, like like just as an example. I am trained um, as a therapist to always work backwards. Okay. okay, where did that come from? Where did that come from? Where did that come from? Yes. Okay, and you trace it back, and you find people. Uh, the first thing you normally notice is the lust for power mm-hmm. and uh, their reliance on symbols of authority or authoritative statements yeah. or shutting people down, shaming people in, in the room, things like that. Yeah, you'll notice the, uh, the the individual kinks that come out. Who do they pay attention? Yes. What, what is the attention that they do yes. uh, give to people? Um, things like that. And then, of course, um, the final thing would be that uh, you look for the um, the methods of manipulation, okay? Um, because as a as a therapist, I'm trained to manipulate people. Um, I, I'm well schooled in it, and I see exactly what they're doing. And if it's not leading to a positive outcome, and by positive I mean putting people in a position of choice with more resources than they had before, then you realize they're just acting out their own pathological trance, um, calling it. I mean, it's. It's, I think you and I touched on it a little bit earlier in a conversation where we were talking about uh, enslaving people while telling them they're becoming free. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is it. And I know we have to kind of wrap up. Um, right. But uh, I do want to say thank you. Oh, sure. This is, this is awesome. And this was a, a spontaneous thing, but I'm really happy. I've been wanting to have, like, start this discussion. And I hope you would be, you know, open to joining me again to Absolutely. Let's go do deeper. This. You know, I it's, mean, it's, it's, it's a message that needs to get out. And like I say, it's a genuine pleasure to be able to sit here and talk to you and you actually get it. So that's cool. Mm. Thanks, man. Well, good. Good. To, thank you for being here. And uh, to all our listeners, how do people find you? Um, it's uh, You can go to renegadehypnotist.com um, or you can just go ahead and if you have any questions at all, just write to support at renegadehypnotist.com. Ask me anything and you'll get a personal reply. Mm. Oh, awesome. Okay, great. And thank you for listening today. Thanks for joining me. Of course. And we will see you in the next podcast. <laughs> Thanks, okay. Lawrence. Thanks. King of all media. Yes. <laughs> Optimized Mind is a co-production of Soul Light Inc. and LK Publishing. Available on iTunes. Subscribe now, share with your friends, and let's upgrade the conversation to The Optimized Mind. If you'd like to know more, visit lawrencelanoff.com. Hey everybody, Lawrence Lanoff here. And if you are still listening to my podcast, you are a hardcore podcast listener. Or you forgot to turn it off. Either one's fine by me because you're here. And for the people who are hardcore and stay around, I have a little surprise. I've been reading a little excerpt from my book at the end of every podcast. And this one 
and this week is no exception. And today I'm going to read chapter 57, or a little snippet of chapter 57, from A Course in Freedom. It's available on my website, lawrencelanoff.com. It's available in Kindle and on Amazon and on Smashwords. You can find me. Have to say, it's a great little book, which is why I'm sharing it with you. Chapter 57, Say Yes to Life, Live in Your Freedom. Realize that no matter how strongly conflicted your energy feels, the conflict is not necessarily real. Whether you say yes or you say no to anything that you experience doesn't really matter. How you say yes or how you say no does matter. When I was in the film industry, I felt like I was always doing something less than spiritual, less than what my path should have been. This conflict completely limited my career as a director. When working with my meditation partner, he suggested to me that it's not the work that's important. It's not about the merits of the movie industry, but rather the consciousness or the awareness from which I do the work. He suggested that if I do the work from the infinite creative consciousness, the film industry is exactly where I needed to be. In retrospect, the film industry taught me about the limitations of the human brain, how easy it is for people to be influenced by symbols created by filmmakers and image makers, understanding how the brain processed information led me to my discoveries about hypnosis, symbols, metaphor, and mythology. See you in the next podcast.